Let me record. Yes. Good morning, Positive Life Club. I am Jessica Alstrom, and I hope that I have the right time this morning. Um, we have been playing a little back and forth as far as what the right time for me to go live, to be live at four o'clock for you guys in Ireland. It's 10 a.m. in Kansas. I've triple checked it, so fingers crossed that I did the math correctly. Good morning from the Midwest of the United States. Um, as you guys are probably hearing on your news, it's, um, it's, a little ag it's a little aggravated over here. And it's a perfect premise for me to start this week's um, workshop of the Earth in Five Dimensions. I was asked to do a little workshop for you guys about 5D and, and what it all means and how it all works and how it unfolds. And how I teach globally all over the planet is always in the now moment. Um, there is only now, there is only now that exists in the past, present, and future, and any parallel realities that we may want to put our toe in quantum leap to, and really all we ever have to work with is this now moment. So with that being said, right now in the United States, there's a bunch of chaos, and we always like to fall back on that race war here in the United States. Black, white, you know, what color are you, um, and... And I am not downplaying, downplaying the life of anyone that has been lost in um, this tragedy at the same time. Um, I'm not going to get into the politics of it because it's really always about a metaphor. All of my teaching is based in you understanding that you are the creator of your reality. And I like to teach in metaphors because it really helps you understand exactly how you're creating. Because it isn't a creation where you think, you know, I want. Um, the perfect relationship and boof, it manifests. What you're actually going to manifest is you needing to become that perfect relationship with yourself. So lots of things are going to manifest for you to be able to step into that role of perfect relationship. And there then of a reflection of being a perfect relationship after you have manifested everything to get to that perfect relationship within then the reflection in the mirror will change. Just like if you would like the universe to smile upon you, you must smile first. So we have to understand metaphors when we're, when we're really diving into how we create our reality. Because from a quantum perspective, we get it. We understand that there is multidimensional fractal consciousnesses that we hold within our viewpoint. But our third dimensional bodies and minds have a hard time logistically and analytically understanding that premise. So metaphor really helps us understand where we are in direct reflection of what we are bringing back and what we are projecting outwardly. So we have reached week three. The first week, hopefully you guys had a chance to dive into that. I really gave you the idea and metaphor of the bridge concept. The bridge has always been in my work as it really allows us to understand that we are kind of placed into a reality with all of the potential that we could ever use within us to get to where our heart's desire is. It's a game of hot and cold on this planet. It's a game of leveling up and becoming more aware and self-realizing our own potential. And of course, for us to self-realize our own potential, we also were born into a certain story of lack. And that lack was on the forefront of our desire and our hunger. Because in order for us to pursue, pursue our desires, in order for us to move in the direction of the things we choose and discern and allow, we must start off hungry, right? We must start off without. If we came here to understand and identify what unconditional love looks like, we were probably born into the absence of it or lost it along the way so that we could align, self-realize, allow, become, manifest, okay? And that's really how it works is when we become something, we manifest a byproduct of it outside of us. And then you're probably saying, well, I didn't, I haven't become hate and why is there hate around me and why is there judgment around me? Well, because you are in multifractal perspective. And the conscious version of you who you see in the mirror and you believe yourself to be isn't completely who you are. You are many, many layers of you. You are the you that you wish to be. You are the you that you're resisting. And you are the you that you are, right? And you are the spectrum of all that you have become, all that you've been indoctrinated to, all that you've been allowed. 
and all that you've been rejected, disassociated from, denied, and abandoned within. So there is a collection of, of amazing potential within us and also amazing lack, okay? And those are limits. And we are moving into a understanding that the earth is now in five dimensions. And I broke it down to understand, to, to allow you guys an easier platform of understanding what that five dimension looks like. And it just looks like a more expanded perspective of earth in many, many, many more possibilities that were possible before, which means what the body is possible um, and able to do has had been upgraded. What the planet herself has been able to do has been upgraded. Um, what your mind is able to do has been upgraded. They say that we were only using 10% of our brain. That has greatly shifted since the impasse sensitives have come to the planet. We are activating that DNA. We are turning ourselves back on. We are moving into that superhuman potential. And the five dimensions gives us access to higher states of consciousness, advanced levels of um, superhuman DNA and hormones, which means that epigenetics, understanding epigenetics, that I am the creator of my genetic tablet, that what I say goes, that I may become all that I choose to be. Okay. Now, on the flip side of that is always, because we're still playing the game of duality, is all the things that I'm not, all of the pain, all of the suffering, all of the fear that binds us to that lack program of the third dimension. The third dimension is a very um, kindergarten space of learning and remembering how to manifest using time, space, and density. We're using suffering as a platform of desire in the third dimension. We're using lack as a springboard for creation in the third dimension. And in the fifth dimension, once we move ourselves over here in, and on the bridge through fourth dimension of creation and of understanding, of unwiring, of deprogramming, of unbecoming, we move back into that higher self. That higher self uses time and space to discern, choose, decide, create. Sounds better. Sounds much better on the fifth dimension than how we work manifestation in the third dimension, which is basically the game of separation. Now, it's very important that if whoever is watching this to understand that everything that is happening and transcending right now on the planet is important as a metaphorical expansion of your own reality. Now, the third dimension always plays the game of separation, no matter what. Let's look at this big virus that we have, uh, this pandemic, right? It's all about separation. It's all about moving away from each other. It's all about your body is unsafe for my body to be around. It is all about, you could get me sick. You're not being responsible with yourself. You stay over there, right? Game of separation, okay? And now it's on a mass level. It's not just happening in my country. It is happening in the global collective, which means it impacts and affects all of us, okay? Now, always in duality, we understand that there's always potential. So even though we've been separated and rejected from each other, we have the internet which is where we can go online and have a connection and we can still interface and we can still connect and we can still commune and we can still expand and we can still teach and we can still remember and we can still play. So in duality, you're always gonna find an abundance of both separation and unity. That's the secret, you guys, is where can you find abundance of unity, right? If you really want to start moving and embarking on this bridge and really get yourself over to 5D, and of, of course when I say that, it's not like a physical, like you're packing your backpack and you're going to 5D. It is really more about unpacking your backpack because as you lighten up, as you lighten up the density within your bodies, when you let go of your lack programs, when you let go of your programs that you are not enough and that you don't deserve and that you are not worthy, then what happens is you start to unshed and you lighten up, right? We all want enlightenment. Well, if you understand the frequency scale, higher self resides, your higher self, the part of you that stays non-physical on the other side of the veil, beckoning you through the heart space, right? Through the crown, through the unfiltered potential of yourselves, beckoning you home, 
and it's asking you to lighten up. It's asking you to lighten up. Now, the game of third dimension, which is what we're trying to, um, working towards um, the collapse of, and the only reason it still vibrates is because we still put our focus on it and what we put our focus on expands because we are creators. Before you incarnated into this physical form full of dense programs that were not yours, you brought in your Akashic memories of your collective karmic space and all that you are. And as an architect god, you wiggled into a body and you said, ooh, let's take up shop and let's create our reality using focus, right? But the game of the third D is focus on what you need to avoid so that you can protect yourself. Focus on what's wrong so you can stay away from it. Focus on what is hurting you so that you can keep it from attacking you. Focus on the pain. Focus on the problem. Focus on the lack. Focus on the suffering. And that is the game of 3D, which is what, because focus is consciousness, right? If you look through a projector, you need the light to shine the picture. That's you. You're the light shining the picture. Whatever you are looking at, you are projecting. So we, through fear and separation, continue to create the third dimension as a likely virtual reality um, sequence. Now, if we would stop looking at it and start working in the unity spectrum and start unpacking that backpack full of programs and get our bodies outside and play and get strong and remember what it feels like to be sensual and um, empowered and connected without being attached and we fed our bodies properly and we fed each other properly, then it would be a hop, skip and a jump that would feel like a major quantum leap. But easier said than done because the third dimension keeps sucking you back to what is. Now, what is vibrating in this collective state of the third dimension is the state of being of suffering, okay? It is suffering, it is lack, it is fear, it is anger, it is um, racism, it is, um, you know, rejection, it's abandonment, right? And I'm sure all of these things have come up for you in the last couple of months for you to look at. Now, when your higher self wants you to evolve and move on to a higher dimension, it will unroot certain programs within you so that you may see consciously brings the subconscious to the conscious spectrum so that you may view right that you may look at observe not judge observe and move into the direction of clearing oh this you know it's like walking into a dirty room and turning a light on you're not going to freak out and judge yourself i'm a horrible person you're like this is a mess this is a mess and it's time for me to clean it up so right now we are in a mass unveiling of shadow, okay? So we are what's called in the state of the collapsing of the third dimension. Now, in order for the third dimension to collapse so that it completely dissipates and there is nothing else for you to look at, so there is nothing else for you to regenerate, it must be fully exposed, fully exposed, right? All of the pain that has been buried in the sediment of the third dimension that we have stepped on top of with a false sense of abundance, with a false sense of freedom, with a false sense of unity, with a false sense of connection. We have stepped on top of what this game was. We have ignored the fact that it is shadow and we have tried to make it into light, you know, getting into toxic relationships and getting stuck getting into jobs and getting stuck, right? Having our freedoms taken away, even though we feel free in certain areas, it's all this false sense of abundance. That is how the 3D keeps you going. You know, you may not love your job, but hey, it pays your mortgage, your false sense of abundance. You may not love your partner, but hey, are you ever gonna do any better? False sense of freedom and abundance, right? So you've gotta look at where you are holding on to that false sense of abundance so that you don't, you don't uproot what it is that you're hiding and avoiding from yourself. Because don't worry, the metaphor of earth is that you cannot outrun yourself ever. It's one big spiral back to yourself. And you will, through your observation, practice, behavior, 
deep belief system, you will manifest the unrooting of the shadow within yourself. Now, sometimes that shadow uproots by looking at what is. You know, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of angry people that were literally docile and a little bit grateful two weeks ago, feeling grateful, now moving into absolute rage because someone has been killed because of their color of their skin by a police officer, which represents authority, represents protection, right? So if we were going to look at this metaphor right now, of what this means for you individually on your 5D journey into unity. What is this bringing up for you, right? Because everything uproots in divine order. Everything that's playing out in the matrix is for you to discern, decide, choose, unravel, uncord, move through a process of clearing. We're not talking purification because you've always been pure. Moving into a clearing state of being, okay? And as you take full responsibility, the ability to respond where you are vibrating at this time and space, you will then be able to move your game piece out of the third dimension and say, you know what? I know there's a lot of things going on right now. And last week, Jess told me to focus on my level of self-trust and my ability to choose without going into crazy anxiety and panic attack. And if you look at those two spectrums, that is part of your engine of manifestation that is going to get you into the fifth dimension. Now, your other engines that, as we talked about last week, is desire, because you need something to move you, right? You get on that scale, Five pounds, no big deal. 20 pounds, you're in the gym, right? You got desire. You know, someone's kind of passive aggressive to you. You keep them in their life. They start hitting, attacking you. You're out. What type of pressure does it require you in order to desire change for you to be able to move on this bridge, okay? Because as long as you continue to look at what is and you keep yourself in a state of judgment, judgment comes from self-protection and self-preservation. As long as you choose to look at reality through the spectrum of judgment, you stay integrated and planted in third D. Now you look over the bridge and you go, I wonder what's going on over there. There sounds like a party, Garden of Eden. Sounds like there is unity and celebration, which is the frequency of expanded gratitude. What is going on over there, right? And I will tell you what is going on on there. That every negative is a shortcut. Every Every limit is used as a potential. Every sadness is a, a, is a gift to reinforce and reconnect with love. Kindness is the ideal facet of what religion could possibly look like over there. It is literally kindness. It is ebb and flow. It is cause and effect. It is what you put out is what you get back. It is the understanding that the I am is responsible for creating the entire reality. Now, you can see probably why you're not all the way over there yet, because you're in your meditations, you're sparkling, right? You're expanded, your field is 25 feet big, you feel like Jesus, you feel like Buddha, you feel all of these things. And then you come out of that expanded place, you move back into the realm of relationships, and you're having four dynamic relationships on this planet. You are having a relationship with your economy and money. You are having a relationship with your body. You are having a relationship to the people and that are playing the characters to act out your grand reflection. And you are having a relationship with time. So where in those fields is their shadow that is being resurrected and uprooted by the collective manifestations of reality. Because here you are, hey, can't we all just get along? Can't we all just love each other? Can't we all just live in harmony? And then poof, there's a pandemic. Poof, there's a mass shooting. Poof, there's buildings caught on fire. Poof, there's terrorism. Poof, there's war. Poof, there's race riots happening. And haven't you noticed, I'm just gonna put this out there, but this is all just a holographic universe and this is all just a game sequence 
isn't it interesting how they keep playing the same game sequences over and over and over again? I mean, come on, is somebody, the creator of this divine third dimensional matrix at all going to get creative? Because if we look back on our track record, there's only a handful of separation ailments that they use to bring us all into fear. Let's look at those. Let's, let's look at this because when we break this down and look at this as virtual reality, and when we look at this as just a program, and we look at this as that we are infinite beings of light that have decided to play human for a little while in the game of time and space and density, why are we taking all this so seriously? So let's break it down and let's make it not so serious because the, the frequency of curiosity and joy and play and celebration and gratitude is your wings, people. It is the wings where you can fly above all of this, absolutely all above it. So what are, th what are those games? Okay, let's look at our history here. Let's look at the game of third dimension. And I know this is a fifth dimensional workshop, but I really can't tell you guys what's going on over there until you let go of the third dimension because you as a quantum being are focused and that keeps popping up your reality everywhere you look. Right? So I'm going to tell you what's going on over there, and then I'm going to end what's going on over here. All right? So in the third dimension, there's a separation, and it is always played right at the exact moment that the collective begins to level up, become more aware, become more loving, become more kind, becomes more knowing, becomes more creative. Okay? As soon as a collective starts to rebirth from a resurrection that happened in March, right? early March, then the world begins to wake, 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 wake up. Hmm, we better turn on the game of separation. We have to keep that false sense of abundance and safety. We have to keep them feeling like we're keeping them free and safe. What can we do? Hmm, let's look at our choices that are allowed in the game of 3D. Okay, we can strike their health, okay? We can play the game of frequency of vibration of ill health because that makes them scared that they're going to die, which can't happen because we're immortal, right? If we keep them feeling like they could die, then they are controllable, okay? If we kept them separate from each other, then they won't tell each other what they know. They won't help each other grow. They won't seed each other. They won't pollinate each other, okay? They will stay in resistance. Then they will listen to the programs of the mind of the indoctrination of their churches, of their schools, of their early programming, right? And of their lineage that they were birthed into that came from a long line of separation. And that will stay active. We will destroy their communities, right? Through war or explosions or terrorism, we will hurt their children because that is where their heartstrings are, people. Have you noticed that the reason that you are held back the most in physical reality is because your heartstrings get pulled back into the collective 3D? You start to move into 5D and the heartstrings get pulled. Your puppy gets sick, your child gets sick, something happens and your heartstrings are pulled. The puppeteer of the third dimension is pulling on the human condition constantly to keep you small, and very limited, okay? So they attack our children, they attack our communities, they attack our freedom, obviously our food supply people. I mean, I know it was just toilet paper, but you all felt the little gut check where you were like, hmm, starting to see food, kind of disappearing. It definitely brought up a survival issue for you. I know it did. When your schools closed, you were like, what the heck is going on here? It brought up a little fear and then you were looking outside of you for the answers so that someone could make you feel safe. Now, that goes against the guidelines of the fifth dimensional reality because that someone designed to keep you safe is the all-knowing I am. It is the presence within you that has the infinite toolbox of wisdom that guarantees that if you connect back within, you will birth the answer, the solution, from your very energy field where the problem generated as well, because you are both heads and tails, you are both yin and yang, you are both dark and light, you are both feminine and masculine, and therefore if you create this problem, you also create the solution. 
So the solution isn't in better government. The solution isn't in um, riots and activism in a non-peaceful way. It is about us going inside, remembering kindness, remembering peace, remembering gratitude, remembering our divine birthright of real abundance, what it feels like to be free, what it feels like to laugh, what it feels like to focus on what is going right on the world, right? And when we do that, when we place our focus on what is going right, we quantum leap. We quantum leap over into the fourth dimension that is the bridge, right? And it is not going backwards, it's going forward. And as long as you build the momentum in the lighter frequencies and you look at everything that is happening as a way to pull up and unroot the shadows within you, then you can use this very pandemic, you can use this very race war that's going on right now, again, as a shortcut to practice kindness, practice peace, practice self-healing, practice self-meditation, practice self-awareness. And through the self-awareness, your field moves from a three-foot space to an eight-foot space, 12-foot 12 12 space, to what they said the Christ was, was 25 feet. And through my very perspective of loving, I affect the masses like a ripple effect. Now, if I look at what is and I focus on what is wrong, then what I do is I rebury the shadow that is coming up for me to be cleared and I can't lighten up. And if I don't lighten up, I may know all about the fifth dimension. I know may all know about the cabal. I may know all about the higher realm. I may know all about the ET spectrum. I may know all, but can I live, act, and participate? in this disclosure, in this unveiling, in this rebuilding, in this divine creation that is now birthed right in front of us. All we have to do is unplug from the 3D matrix and stop moving into the separation, even if you feel separate. If you feel separate, if you feel alone, reconnect to the divine higher self, which is you. Find that peace because it is not excitement that is the frequency of higher self. Excitement is the frequency of your inner child. The frequency of higher self is peace. And as soon as you connect back to that peace, you will remember, put yourself back together, and you will say, this is just a dream. This is a holographic experience. And over here, we're playing separation. And every time we start to level up, a new game of separation is unveiled because that's how awesome that game is. It is very intoxicating and it feels very real, but it is not, okay? So the fifth dimension, as we move closer to it, where you will notice it happening in your real life, because it won't be like one day you wake up and you're on a new planet. The brain is wired for you to basically glitch, move into parallel realities, and not actually notice that big of a change until you look back and you're like, wow, everything has changed, okay? Because your human brain is designed to keep you in the program. And if you jump too far, you'd be like, this isn't even real, and the game would be over, and there would be nothing to do, okay? So you have agreed to play this game. So what your life starts to look like when you start to integrate five dimensions into your reality is that obviously your immune system is pretty damn strong, okay? That your body is requiring more light, more bodies of water. You're going to feel really good around bodies of water. It's going to be like a form of breath for you. And I'm going to ask you guys right now, if you're feeling any sort of lower vibration to get near water, I'm going to go a little bit longer than 30 minutes, but just give me five more minutes here. So get around a body of water. That will help you remember because the conduit of water is held in the fifth dimension right now, as long as it's moving and clean. Moving and clean water is holding the resident point of our fifth dimensional collective. So breathing deeply near fast moving water, oceans, lakes, rivers, anything that's moving, okay? That's gonna be, it's clear, okay? That's gonna help you. Um, seeing that your relationships are so much less about ego these days, that ego is not ripping apart your relationships. You're actually having sub substantial, unconditional friendships. Your families are mending, some parts of them, some are moving away from each other, which is totally normal in the fifth dimension. Your, um, your desire to um, be right is 
going away, which means you moved away from the awakened into the preacher, into the all know it all back into the allowing. You're just allowing people to be, you're sending love instead of judgment to people. This is all what your five dimensional body is going to be and produce through its vibrational unit, okay? So when you look at someone and instead of going into a judgment, you go into kindness of that person does not know what they don't know and they are scared. And so they're, if they're scared, then what could I do right now lovingly to assist in that, uh, in, in that compassion and be of service not to making them unafraid because that's where they are and that's where they choose to be, but knowing that they are seen and heard and loved and safe by you, okay? Because if we are moving into the Christ consciousness, the crystalline frequency of the DNA, then your job is to be more kind than it is to be right. And that will be a normal organic sensation in your body when you move to the fifth. You don't need to contemplate, can I be kind right now, even though I want to judge? Judgment won't even be in your hardware. When you let go of judgment, you are officially on the 5D earth, okay? You don't have the ability. You see pain as a form of expansion. You see limits as possibilities. You see growth as essential. You see pain, again, as another platform to find your purpose. You use your past stories as your testimonies to heal others. You use your to to toolbox of your metaphysical gifts, not just to help others, but to evoke that joy and spark within yourself. You can receive, you can give without rescuing. And you start to notice through your eyes and your five senses, how beautiful everything is starting to look. How clean everything is starting to look because you are becoming beautiful because you are becoming clean on the inside and you're lightening up so your viewpoint as you become more enlightened is looking down at everything like an angel seeing that everything that is is either a byproduct of collapsing an old world that can be rebirthed from the ashes or the result of that collapse into the rebirth state. So it's non-duality. You start to move into non-duality. And when you move into non-duality, all choices become absolute potential. Because as we merge the next few years and settle into this five-dimensional reality, we are preparing ourselves for six, which is the divine shapeshifter, which is the body of light, which is moving us into working with time and space, not against it. All right? So I'm going to leave that little there nugget for you. Obviously, I could talk all day about this, but I have 30 minutes. And I know I gave you enough for you to look at where you are in understanding of where you are allowed to be, because there is no, you can't go and you're not going to go and, and you're going to stay behind. Look at where your heartstrings are pulling you back to the 3D. Look at where your judgment is pulling you back to 3D and work on those two anchor points. How can I let go of these heartstrings to expand? How can I let go of judgment to expand? And I will see you guys in the fifth dimension. See you guys all really soon. Love you all. Thank you for giving me this platform. Love you guys. See you next week.